Well, tonight, young people, as you can see, we are continuing in our message in our series of finding our identity in Christ. We are no longer among the world. We are coming out. We are being separate. And we no longer find our identity in the world, but we find it in Christ. I'm so glad, again, that you're tuned in here at The Encounter Live and that you're watching. I hope you invited some friends, and I hope they're watching, too. If they are, hey, friends, welcome to The Encounter Live. We're glad that you're watching it. We're glad that you're a part of it. God has just been moving tonight. The power and presence of God has been so strong in this place. And if we prayed for you and you begin to see God move and you got healed or this happened or that happened, send in your testimony because we want to praise God for what he's doing. Well, last week as we started off this series of No Longer Among Us and Finding Our Identity in Christ, we talked about coming out and being separate and what it means to look like a separate young person where you are no longer identified by the things in the world. You don't find your identity by all these things that the world tempts you with, but you know who you are in Christ and that's where your identity is. So tonight, as we're going into week two of talking about this, we're going to talk about renewing your mind. Somebody comment that right now. Say renew your mind. If you have a friend that you know needs to hear this, send the link now. If you haven't sent it, now's the time to send it because there's a lot of us in our generation, we need to renew our mind. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's pray before we start. God, I thank you, Lord, for this young person that's watching right now, God. I thank you for all that you want to do in their life. You have such an incredible life for them, God, such an incredible calling that's on their life. And I pray, Lord, that through this broadcast, through these messages that we're sharing with them, through these encounters that they're having, that they would come to find, Lord, who you created them to be. They would come to find what their true identity is. They would no longer be confused. They would no longer waver between two opinions, but that they would know who you are and know who you created them to be. Holy Spirit, lead, guide, and direct our time tonight. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. So our scripture for tonight that we're going to be diving into as we talk about uh, renewing our mind is we're going to go to Romans 12 verse 2. Now, if you've ever heard me minister, if you've been on my Zoom, if you've been on live with me, I want you to get out your notes, get out your Bible, and let's dive in. Don't be a spectator tonight. Be engaged because this is for you. Let's go to Romans 12 verse 2. We're going to read it in the New King James Version. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what, what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. It is time for us to renew our mind. When we renew our mind, it transforms our life. Anybody need to be transformed? Anybody need to change some things? Change how you think? Change how you talk? Change how you act? Well, if that's you, that message is for you tonight. It's time to renew our mind. Because when we renew our mind, our whole life changes. Let me read you that same verse in the message version. I love breaking it down like this. In Romans 12, verse 2 in the message, it says this. Are you ready? It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Hold on. Think about that for a moment. Are you fitting into the world a little bit too easy? Are you singing some of those songs a little too quickly? Are you posting things a little too fast? Are you laughing at jokes a little too much? We got to think about it. Are you becoming so well adjusted to the culture where now you're just singing the songs and, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know. Or now you're laughing at a joke and you're like, oh, that was actually inappropriate. Or you were doing this and doing that and you didn't even think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. We can't become so well adjusted. It says instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. That's good news for us. He says, right recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it quick obedience is what God is asking for yeah. unlike the culture around you it says always dragging you down anybody feel like the world is just dragging you down anybody feel that these people around you are dragging you down maybe you got a toxic friend that's dragging you down 
Maybe you got somebody in your family that just won't stop. Maybe you got somebody, a hater on social media, and they just keep dragging you down. That's what this world does. That's what the culture will do. It will drag you down, and it's going to bring you down to its level of immaturity. It's going to cause you to be immature. Where now you're not even mature anymore. You're acting like a child. You're just doing whatever you want and all this stuff. They're going to drag you down to their level rather than helping you get up to the standard of God. Because God has a standard. But see, what God does is God, and remember, I'm still in the message. We're still reading this. God brings the best out of you. And he develops well-formed maturity in you. God wants to form you tonight. Will you allow yourself to be easy enough for God to form? Or are you going to be stiff and hard saying, oh, God, mm -mm, mm, you can't touch me. Can't touch this. No, 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 no. Can you say, God, just have your way with me tonight. Somebody comment that right now. Say, God, just have your way tonight. Have your way with me tonight. Because when he has his way with you, that's when your life is going to change. That's when you're going to be transformed. That's when he's going to help you become all that he's created you to be. Somebody shout amen. See, the alternative to conforming to the world's lifestyle or the world's ways is by transformation. The only way for you to no longer be among them is you have to change. Because you got to hear this. The world's not going to change for nobody. Culture's not going to change for nobody. Society ain't trying to change for nobody. So we have to be the ones to say, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to change how I'm living. I'm going to change my lifestyle. I'm going to change how I'm thinking. I'm going to change how I'm talking. I'm going to change how I'm walking. I'm going to change how I'm acting. Is somebody ready to change tonight? Transformation comes about when Jesus Christ and his word renews our mind. So how do we renew our mind? We must allow the word of God and Jesus Christ to get inside of us. Let me not get too much ahead of myself, though, because I have three keys that I'm going to give you tonight on how to renew your mind. See, when we get transformed and we allow God to renew our mind, this is where our vision, our values, and our plans are now governed by who God is and what his truth is. That means God is now the Lord of your life. Many people like to say that God is in control. God is not in control until you let him be in control. So my question to you is, are you letting God be in control? See, that's why when we get saved, we must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Salvation is not just receiving what Jesus did at the cross, but it's acknowledging who Jesus Christ is. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord. My life belongs to you, God. You are in control. You can have me. You can do whatever you want with me, God. That's true lordship. Where you say, Jesus, have your way. See, when Jesus is truly Lord, you'll stop fighting about certain things. You'll stop arguing about certain things. You'll stop, you'll stop being so picky about, well, can I do this? Can I do that? It's whatever he says, that's what goes. See, Jesus didn't come to the earth and just say, yeah, Father, I know why I'm here, but I think I'm going to go over here for a moment, and I'm going to go hang out there, and oh, that looks cool, that looks fun. Let me go over there, and oh, what are you guys doing over there? Oh, I'm coming. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said, I only say what the Father tells me to say. I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only go where my Father tells me to go. See, Jesus was the perfect example of what our relationship should look like with God. That's why he walked the earth. See, Jesus didn't just come and die. He came and he lived so he could show us how we need to live. He had a different mindset than everybody else. I don't even want to say his mind was renewed because there was nothing for it to be renewed to. He just came that way. He came with a different mindset. He came thinking differently. He came talking differently. Are you, are you going to be different? As everybody always says, oh, I'm different. Really? How so? Oh, you know, I'm different. I'm you. Really? How so? Because you say what everybody else says. 
You act like everybody else. You dress like everybody else. You think like everybody else. See, when you're really different, that's when people look at you. See, we think, we think different is really popular. We still today don't accept different. Anytime somebody comes out of the box of what's popular, of what's common, of what's the norm, man, they get a lot of flack. But you know what? If as Christians we have to take that, then it is what it is. If that's what it takes to be different to say, mm, I'm not going to laugh at that. Mm, I'm not going to talk like that. Mm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to post that. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to do these things. That's what's going to cause you to be different. That's what's going to cause you to be separate from everybody else. And that's what God is calling you to do. See, leaders, they don't just stay around everybody else saying, say, hey, what are you going to do? Hey, what are you doing? They come from everybody else and says this is what I'm doing if you want to follow you can come along but if not that's okay I'm going all the way with God that's how Jesus walked and he only had 12 people that followed him 12 disciples that were walking with him everywhere he went because they then could only do what he told them to do and go where he told them to go and say what he told them to say we need to be true disciples where we renew our mind and we no longer take our cues from the world, but we take it from God. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. See, this is where we are no longer, we're no longer taking our cues again from the world's deception. Because there's a lot of deception in this world that will try to get into you. That's the stuff that I told you. It looks right. It feels right. It seems right. Oh, no this feels good oh no this seems okay but it's not it's deception that's why we must renew our mind because we can no longer just say you know what you know it it does seem right this does seem like a good thing I agree that's good everybody wants peace love and unity but see there's a way that God goes about things his thoughts are higher his ways are higher the way that we do things here is not the way that God does stuff in heaven that's why we need need to bring the kingdom of God here on earth and it starts with you having a renewed mind will you position yourself where you have the mind of Christ and you begin to think like God talk like God act like God and do what God wants you to do will you do that are you willing to do that having a renewed mind and living a transformed life for Jesus is where you understand that the will of God is good, desirable, and perfect. See, a lot of people, they like to live in God's permissible will, where God, we have free will so we can do what we want, and they don't live in God's perfect will, where this is the exact plan and purpose that God created you for. You might be doing something, maybe you're doing something and it's great, or maybe you're not and you're confused. The best place for you to ever be is not just in a place of, oh, this feels good but in a place where you say I know deep down inside I am right where God wants me to be I am right in the perfect will of God see renewing your mind is not just about what you think on or what you put in renewing your mind is where you have a completely transformed mindset in the way that you think it's not just what you're thinking but how you're thinking It's time for this generation to change how they think. How you think. Not just what you think, because we gotta keep taking those thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ. But it's how you think. See, it's even that right there. When you have a thought, I'm not talking about, oh, well, you gotta stop thinking things. Well, yeah, but what happens when you have the thought? Do you know to bring the word out where you say, that thought's not gonna stay there. I'm gonna take it captive and make it obedient to Christ. See, that's when how your mind is thinking begins to be transformed. As I wrap up, I wanna give you three keys to renew your mind. Number one, Take your eyes off of the world and put your eyes on God. You've got to turn away from the world and turn to God. See, many people will try to turn away, but they never turn to something. Therefore, they just turn back. If you're going to renew your mind, you've got to stop looking at what people are doing and start looking to God. See, that happens a lot when you start eating healthy. You start eating healthy foods and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm actually enjoying this but if you go back if you look back at those things that you had before you remember oh wait I think I should
should do that. I think I should do this. You've got to stop. You've got to turn away. Say, I'm not even looking. I'm not even paying attention. I'm turning to you, God. Amen. Number two on how to renew your mind. Let the word of God be your number one influence. Stop letting these social media influencers influence you. Stop letting these TikTokers influence you. Stop letting these YouTubers influence you. Stop letting the video game influence you. Stop letting those worldly things be the number one influence. God must be number one. God must be the number one voice. God must be the number one presence. God must be the number one person that is involved in your life. Number three that you need to do to renew your mind is live with a higher standard than that of the world. Stop lowering your standard because of what the world wants. Yeah. Bring up your life to the standard of God's word. In God's word, he puts in there, this is how you need to live. This is what you need to do. You've got to start raising your life up to the standard of God's word. Stop settling for the way that the world lives. Stop settling for the way that your friends act. Renew your mind. Come out and be yes. separate. No longer be among them, but find your identity in Christ. If there's a young person watching right now and you've never accepted Jesus in your life, you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you're hearing every word that I'm saying right now, and you're believing it, not only does your mind need to be renewed, but it starts with your heart. Yeah. It starts, where is your heart at? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Maybe some of you, you've accepted God, but he's no longer been Lord and you've been falling away. It's time for you to come back tonight. It's time for you to come back. If that's you right now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again. Yes. I repent, Jesus, and I receive your forgiveness. I will love you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, all of my strength. I give you everything, yes. Jesus. I make you my Lord. I make you my King. I give you everything tonight. In Jesus' name. 